This week at Starbase, while construction continues at the build site and air separation plant, SpaceX puts the finishing touches on Booster 16 and Ship 37, relocates them to the launch site, and stacks them on the Pad A launch mount. As SpaceX scrubbed Flight 10 yesterday, we're waiting to see if we're go for launch today at 6.30 p.m. local time. Now let's dig into this week's update and take a closer look. With the last flights of Block 2 Starship looming on the horizon, production of the Block 3 ships is well underway. Starship 39's nose cone was stacked on the payload section, completing the first upper assembly of a Block 3 ship. Starship 38, the last of the Block 2 ships, continues to be fitted out with vacuum engines being installed. Moving on to our construction updates, groundwork continues at the site of the future air separation plant. A continuous flight auger and crane are being used to place the rebar cages for friction piles in the ground, which will be distributing the weight of the facility and its equipment and stop it from sinking into the loamy soil. At the launch complex itself, the final liquid oxygen pump motor was put into place. A new water tank was also delivered and installed at the Pad B complex. As the clock counted down towards the launch of Flight 10, workers continued to push hard at building up the second launch pad. Concrete was placed near the north side of the flame trench, while workers continued to add cladding to the Pad B gantry and its ground support equipment bunker. More sections of the flame trench wall were added in, and the liquid oxygen quick disconnect door was also installed. Testing this week at Starbase began with Test Tank B18.1, a structural validation article for Super Heavy Block 3, being put through a pair of cryogenic proofing tests at Massey's outpost. Once filled, the tank was kept under pressure for several hours before being emptied out. With the test tank proven, the new boosters can move forward into the next phases of production and testing. The gas generators for Pad B's water deluge system were tested for the first time on Friday. This system creates the pressure that drives water into the launch pad's water pipes. A second test was also performed on Tuesday. The pump farm was also tested this week, going through a battery of tests to make sure the equipment is working as designed. Venting was also observed from the Pad B gantry structure. In other news at Starbase, serial number two, the oldest remaining test tank from the earliest days of the Starship development program, was taken down and scrapped this week, freeing up more space at the build site. The tank had been serving as a water storage tank and is no longer needed. Final preparations for Flight 10 began in earnest on Friday, with the ship's static fire adapter being relocated to Sanchez. Workers began disassembling the temporary ship quick disconnect structure from the top of the mount at Pad A as workers reconfigured the launch pad for orbital flight. After the temporary test structure was taken apart, the booster quick disconnect was tested to make sure that the protective hood and interface panel were still in working order. Over at the Rocket Garden, workers used a lift to install the charges inside Booster 16's flight termination system. At five days and counting to the launch, 23 water trucks made their way to the launch site. After refilling the Pad A deluge system, four of the trucks moved over to the detention pond and emptied it of the water from the last week's ship testing. With less than four days left on the count, Booster 16 began its final trip to the launch pad, heading to the Highway 4 entrance before rolling out on a late night journey to Pad A. Once at the pad, Booster 16 was moved between the chopsticks and secured to the arms for lift. The Super Heavy booster was then lifted off the transport stand, moved into position over the launch mount and lowered into place. Continuing the prep work, the tower's chopsticks were brought down to their resting position ahead of ship rollout and lift. The detonation suppression system, which helps keep the underside of the launch mount free of volatile gases, was also tested ahead of flight, and SpaceX's crane lowered its main boom to protect it during the launch. Back at the build site, the ship transport stand was brought over and taken inside Mega Bay 2. While the door was closed, the ship was lifted off the work stand and set down on the transport. With the ship on the transport stand now, the only thing left to do was load Ship 37 with its payload of simulated Starlink satellites. The loading jig and tray were lifted up to the ship's payload bay door, and the supporting crossbars were installed inside the ship. The eight dummy satellites were quickly loaded inside Ship 37, one after another. Once all eight Starlink simulators were loaded, the jig was removed and the payload bay door was closed. From start to finish, the ship was loaded and ready to roll in just over two hours. 
Ship 37, loaded and ready for launch now, was brought out of Mega Bay 2 and began its rainy journey down Highway 4 to the launch complex. Weather would remain the leading concern of the launch, with an estimated probability of go of 45% during rollout. Once Ship 37 arrived, it was soon set between the chopsticks, which were then moved up and closed around the ship for lift. As the sun began to set over Starbase, the chopsticks began raising Ship 37 to assemble the flight stack. One of the Starship's goals is rapid vehicle turnaround between flights. With less than 24 hours before the scheduled T-minus zero, this is the shortest timeline yet between the vehicle stack and launch for the Starship program. Launch day began with another test of the detonation suppression system, once again making sure that a fuel leak wouldn't be a high risk of fire and explosion. The four flaps on Ship 37 were put through a final battery of testing, and the ship's re-entry control surfaces were cleared and ready for flight. Both the ship and booster transport stands were taken out of the launch site and were brought up Highway 4 to the first hard checkpoint. At T-4 hours and 27 minutes, the chopsticks detached from Starship 37, opened and raised to their launch position. At T-4 hours and 27 minutes, the chopsticks detached from Starship 37, slowly opening up before being raised to the launch position. With an hour and 50 minutes on the clock, the chill down began on the tank farm equipment as the countdown proceeded towards the go-no-go no go pole for propellant load. Following a short delay in the launch countdown to address an issue at the tank farm, the launch operation teams passed the go pole for propellant load at T-1 hour and 15 minutes. Venting was observed from the launch tower and orbital launch mount as the cryo lines began to chill down. A short while later, propellant load began, but unfortunately due to a leak in one of the liquid oxygen lines in the ship quick disconnect arm, the launch was scrubbed and rescheduled for Monday. This week at the Cape saw the preparation and launch of the USS F-36 carrying the secretive X-37B space plane into orbit for the OTV-8, the space plane's eighth mission to date. After being rolled out of the integration facility, the encapsulated X-37B was attached to the Falcon 9 rocket and brought to the pad before being raised vertical for launch. On August 21st, Falcon 9 Booster 1092 lifted off from LC-39A with OTV-8 carrying the X-37B space plane into orbit for the Booster 6 mission to date. The orbiting spacecraft will perform a range of experiments for the Air Force and Space Force before returning to Earth at an undisclosed future date. In other space news this week, workers began placing concrete inside the flame trench at the new Starship launch pad at LC-39A as SpaceX continues its efforts to bring the pad online by the end of next year. Firefly Aerospace announced that they're beginning a feasibility study for launching from Hokkaido Spaceport in Japan. NASA's Artemis team revealed that the boat, tail, and engine section have been integrated for the Artemis 3 space launch system, which is scheduled to fly no earlier than 2027. If everything goes according to schedule, Artemis 3 will be the first time humans set foot on the moon since 1972, returning to the lunar surface on SpaceX's Starship HLS. Tugboat Lady Lauren brought a barge into Port Canaveral, carrying two cryo tanks to the KSC Turn Basin. After being slowly rolled off the barge, the new tanks were taken to Launch Complex 39A for the Starship Propellant Storage Farm. The James Webb Space Telescope discovered a new moon orbiting Uranus in the outer solar system, the 29th known natural satellite of the planet. The small moon bearing the temporary designation S2025-U1 is about 5 to 6 miles in diameter and orbits the planet every 9.6 hours. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.